Guys, Eagle Aquatics back here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be coming at you guys with another care guide. This time, it's gonna be on a fish. It's gonna be on one of the most interesting fish I've ever kept in the in my years in the saltwater hobby, being the blue jaw triggerfish, blue throat triggerfish. There's all kinds of names for those guys. Awesome fish. I'm gonna tell you guys everything you ever wanna know about this fish and what you wanna know before buying it and what to expect uh, when keeping it. So, uh, starting out, I would say they're, the care level on these guys, really easy. Uh, very easy fish to take care of. That's the thing. After they get established in the tank, they're extremely easy to care for. Like, this guy is super active. He, they're basically bottomless pits. They never stop eating. They, they're always eating. Uh, they readily accept most every food, uh, meat food. I, I would only feed these guys um, frozen food. They will not, at least mine, the bigger carnivorous fish, they don't really accept pellets or flakes in my opinion. Uh, they never have. I, I don't feed my fish any pellets or any of that. I feed them frozen food because it's more natural. And that's what these guys are or, um, born to eat pretty much is meat. So frozen food, those guys, but super easy to care for. That's the thing, really active. So what makes this fish one of the most uh, interesting fish I've ever got uh, in the hobby, in my years in the hobby, was at first, when you guys, you, have, you guys have to know, when you first buy these fish, trigger fish are, the whole family of trigger fish, very shy fish at first, very shy. At least mine was, I worked at the fish store, we get them in all the time. They are very, very shy fish at first, and they're very skittish, that's the thing. My trigger fish, this blue jaw trigger fish you see in here, I bought them uh, probably last year, two years ago, probably, when I, one of the first fish I ever had in this tank, it was, it was one of my bucket list fish. Uh, so I picked them up at the fish store, uh, brought them home, very, very shy fish, hid for almost, uh, I think it was about three weeks. I barely seen them. He'd come out when I was not near the tank. When I came near the tank, he'd dart back in the rocks. He had the special hiding place he had. Never, ever, ever came out. Didn't eat, didn't do anything, nothing. I got worried, that's the thing. But I realized then that these fish are very shy at first. They come straight from the wild, you gotta realize that. Um, they're gonna hide a lot when you buy them. When you first put them in the tank, they're gonna hide. At least mine did. I'm not too sure if they're all like this, but mine was very, very scared of me and of the other fish and everything. He hid all the time for almost three weeks. He didn't eat for three weeks. And finally, just one day, he started opening up, a little skittish still, but I put some seaweed in the tank and he started joining the other fish and eating it. And then I threw some mice and shrimp, trying to entice him to eat more. And he did go after him. It took him about a week after that to really get accustomed to the food and everything. And he finally started eating regularly. Um, but once, once they uh, establish that trust in the tank, uh, they get used to the surroundings, get used to the other fish, get used to seeing you inside the tank and feeding. Um, they become very accustomed to their surroundings and they are very, very active and they will eat anything you feed them. But that's the thing, you guys can't get worried when you first buy these fish. Oh yeah, they're hiding, they're gonna hide. For weeks, mine hid for three weeks. They're gonna do that, that's the thing. But don't get, don't get worried. Uh, they will eventually get accustomed to the tank and start eating. But that, that's what's very interesting about these fish. That's, uh, it, it, scared, it scared me at first when I first bought them, but you, you just gotta realize that it takes them a while to get accustomed. Once they do, amazing fish. So another uh, huge plus about these blue jaw triggerfish, they are one of the only species of triggerfish that are completely reef safe. I mean completely. Mine has never bothered an invert, never bothered a coral, doesn't bother other fish, doesn't matter what size the fish is, it will not bother it. I, he doesn't eat hermit crabs, he doesn't bother my shrimp, it's crazy. These triggerfish are completely reef safe and that is very, very hard to find in the triggerfish family, is a reef safe triggerfish. That's why everybody always wants these triggers. They are reef safe. They don't bother coral. Uh, the main reason for these guys being reef safe is their bottom jaw 
um, I guess you could call it their chin. Their their mouth is positioned above their chin. It's kind of weird. It, it's not like a pointy mouth, like a like a dog face puffer. Their teeth aren't right in front. It's kind of gapped, so their mouth's kind of set back. So it's very hard. I've heard that's why the reef's safe because they can't target coral um, because their mouth is in a weird position on the face. I'm not too sure if that's true. But uh, I have found them to be extremely reef safe, extremely peaceful fish. This fish just keeps to himself, does not bother any other fish. I've never seen him bicker with another fish in this tank. Um, I, I couldn't, it, it's a perfect, great, great fish to have. Peaceful, um, completely reef safe. Like, I'd tell you guys, you could put this guy in with cleaner shrimp. You can put them in with coral. I got them in here with a coral bandit shrimp right now. I got hermit crabs in here. I got emerald crabs, sh uh, snails, stuff like that. He's never bought a thing. No, very reef safe. I would say, yeah, at least my, at least in my case, blue jaw trigger fish, male and female are very reef safe. Um, now, one thing you guys have to understand when buying these things, not all of the blue jaw triggers have the blue jaw. It's only the males that have this coloration. Only the males have the blue jaw, uh, the blue around their, their mouth, and they have the dark gray and the yellow highlights around their fins. Only the males do. The females are pretty much all gray, are really light gray. They're pretty cool looking. Um, and you can also pair these guys. They have been known to breed in the hobby and pair up, so that is really cool. Um, they're carnivorous fish, like I was saying earlier. So diet on these guys, feed them a lot of meats. I feed mine primarily mysis shrimp. Uh, I'll feed them silver sides sometimes because I feed them puffer silver sides. Uh, so they'll eat that, they'll eat clams. Clams is really good. T keep, you want to feed them like shelled invertebrates because they need to keep their teeth trimmed back. So the clams, the mysis shrimp, krill helps them. Uh, that's for sure. Mine readily accepts seaweed too. Uh, I originally started putting the seaweed in for the tangs because it's part of their diet, but this dude loves seaweed. It's crazy. Uh, they go crazy for seaweed. It's nuts. It took a, he didn't eat it at first, but eventually after he's seen the tangs and everything, he, he just destroys it. Like he just finds pieces in the tank. It, it's one of his favorite foods. I don't even know he might like that better than mice shrimp. It's nuts, but they devour seaweed. It's really cool. Um, Max size, these aren't one of the biggest trigger fish you buy. They're gonna max out around ah, probably 10 inches. You probably won't see them any more than seven inches, honestly, unless you put them in some massive tank. But I have this one in a 125 gallon tank, a uh, reef tank. Uh, he hasn't grown much since I got him. I probably got him, he was probably an inch or two smaller than this, but I've had him for almost two years and he hasn't grown much. They, they don't grow very fast, at least in, uh, I guess you could call it 125, kind of. Like, I, I guess it's a medium-sized tank. You know, it's a larger tank, but um, that's it's it's a more of a minimum size for these fish. That's probably why he's not growing too fast because of the limited space. But he does have six feet of swimming room. I think it's more than enough. Uh, and that brings me on to the next time minimum tank size. I would say I wouldn't uh, for long term. I wouldn't put this guy in any less than 120 gallon tank. Uh, I don't think he would do really good in like a 75 over over time. It's just too small. That's the thing. I mean, temporarily, sure. A 125 for life, I would say it's probably good. It would probably suit him. Um, but ideally, of course, like 210, 180. You know, that's a really good size tank. But a 125 will suit him just fine. That's why I got him. Uh, I used one of my bucket list fish. I always wanted to keep one. And knowing that the reef safe, perfect trigger fish for a reef tank. Um, and another thing for these guys, Give them a bunch of open swimming room because they're like, I mean, like tangs. They love to swim over there. This dude, this blue jaw trigger fish just swims back and forth all day long and he's not eating or when I'm not by the tank. Back and forth on the glass, always swimming. They love to swim. They're extremely fast, extremely fast. So if you startle this guy, he will dart. And that's another thing. Um, these guys, if they're startled suddenly, they can jump out of the tank. I've had this dude jump out one time uh, he jumped out the back when I when I walked in, or 
when I walked near the tank, he just jumped out, landed on the floor and back to the tank. So they do jump. So if you have a completely open top tank with no canopy or something, I would put some over the tank because you never know with these guys. They're kind of skittish. Uh, so, you know, it's a good safety precaution because they're not cheap. Um, another thing with these trigger fish, they do like to hide, uh, especially at night. Well, uh, during the day, these blue jaw trigger fish, they were out a ton. They're out almost all day. They won't really hide that much during the day uh, once they're used to you and all the other fish. At first, like I said, they're gonna hide. But after they come accustomed to their surroundings, they're uh, gonna be out all the time. But at night, these dudes do go inside the rocks and they do lay down and hide. Mine has a hiding spot behind there, somewhere behind in the rocks. So they do like to have hiding spots. They call them trigger fish because they wedge themselves in the rocks with their two, the top fin and the bottom fin. It's pretty cool. So give them some hiding spots, give them a lot of rock. And uh, last thing I'm gonna talk about pretty much is cost of these fish. At least what I've seen, I've worked at a fish store. I've seen these guys, usually they range around a hundred dollars. I've never really seen one over a hundred dollars. I paid 70 bucks for mine. Usually you see them anywhere from 70 to 90 bucks is where I've seen them. I wouldn't pay much more. I wouldn't really pay much more for those guys. I, you're get, kind of getting ripped off unless it's like a giant one. But I would say 80 bucks is like perfect price for them. So they're not the cheapest fish by any means, but they're totally worth it, man. Like the color you get with these, it's just crazy. And uh, I mean, who can ask for a reef set or any fish better than a reef set trigger fish? Like it's completely awesome. You get the yellow highlights on the fin, you get the blue jaw, gray pattern, bunch of cool stuff. Um, just a great fish to keep. And another thing with these guys, you can find them at almost any local fish store. You can find them online. You know, they're very, very common fish. Very, very fun and easy to keep. They get along with any other fish. I put them in super small fish. There's some six line rats in there and he's never bothered any of them. He gets along with puffers. I'm pretty sure he even get along with other trigger fish, honestly. Just a great fish to keep. Um, great for a reef tank. Minimum tank size, 125, uh, 120 gallons. Uh, amazing fish to keep. And that's pretty much all I gotta say about this guy. Really, really cool fish. If you're looking for uh, a great reef fish and uh, want something reef safe that's in the trigger fish, puffer family, definitely don't overlook the blue jaw trigger because they're amazing. Throw one in your reef tank, uh, you will not regret it. And again, like I said, I can't stress this enough guys, when you first buy these guys, they will hide. At least mine did very, very shy at first. But don't don't get worried, they'll come out eventually and they're gonna be a star fish in the reef tank. So thank you guys for watching. Check out some more uh, videos on the channel. I got a whole, literally a whole playlist. There's probably, probably close to 30 videos now on um, care guides, on fish, inverts, coral, freshwater fish, all kinds of stuff. Go check that out. There's a, a, also a playlist on this 125 gallon reef tank. It doesn't look like much now. Uh, I explain it in other videos. I'm gonna be coming out with another care guide video um, and another 125 reef tank update to update you guys on what's going on right now. So go check out the channel. I'm almost to 4,000 subscribers. So thank you guys, I can't thank you guys enough for that. Um, any questions, of course, DM me on Instagram at Eagle Aquatics or leave a comment. I respond to all comments. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.